So uh, we're here today with uh, Brother Roger Woods from the Wald Lake Congregation. How you doing, Roger? I'm doing good, Drew. How about you? Pretty good, pretty good. We were just saying before we started the recording that it's been three years since uh, Roger and I have met, but we've been friends for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, I think I first met you when I was preaching at the Sarnia Church of Christ, and you were at the Chase Road uh, Church of Christ long ago. So do you want to give a little introduction, uh, how long you've been at Walt Lake? And I know you're not just the minister there, so you can... Sure. Uh, I, I uh, came to Walt Lake in uh, April of 1999. And uh, we had uh, left Chase Road when they closed in 1997 and went down to Tennessee for a, uh, a short two years. And uh, we're glad to get back up north. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, we've been here since then. And uh, I've been uh, also serving as an elder with this congregation since 2007. Well, I've been blessed and a lot of other people have been blessed that you're back in the Detroit area. And uh, so... We are going through a very challenging time right now, and as the people of people of God, we're going through a challenging time. And so, I just wanted to begin. Uh, maybe you can tell us, either positively or negatively, how the pandemic um, has impacted any of your congregation or your congregation, and uh, how you see um, your role in helping the church uh, manage the different levels of anxiety, um, nervousness. Some people have no anxiety. Some people are very anxious. You know, we, we understand that uh, among the church family. Right. Well, you know, I, I, as I sat down and um, you, you know, thank you for providing me some, you know, cues about where you're going with the questions, <laughs> you know, so I could do a little uh, work ahead of time. Uh, but, you know, on the positive side, what we're doing right now has been one of the most positive things for the congregation as at Gen General. Uh, the move online has uh, opened us up to a whole new opportunity, you know, set of opportunities that just weren't, we weren't aware of before, or if we were aware of them, we weren't willing to go there. Um, and so, you know, just like uh, persecution forced the church out of Jerusalem, uh, you know, the, the pandemic has forced us out onto the online world, right. and it and it's been a blessing. Honestly, uh, we I can tell you that we have uh, a, someone who is now uh, she almost considers herself a member of the church, although she's not. And uh, but that happens to be our new neighbor. Uh, we moved into we moved out of the church house uh, a little less than a year ago now, uh, and into our a neighborhood near the church. And uh, we met our neighbor and, and she was asking me, well, how are you guys dealing with the pandemic? You know, she said, I know how, you know, the, the parish is dealing with the pandemic. How are you dealing with it? And, and I told her and she goes, well, do you mind if I join your Bible studies? And uh, we, I said, please. And now, you know, she is as well known as anybody else that's on our Zoom call. Uh, and, and so that's been a really big plus. Uh, we have people joining our Zoom conversation from California Arkansas and Texas right, on a regular basis uh, and have literally become part of our group. And so it, it's expanded us out. Um, the things that I do online for with my sermon, I do a pre-recorded sermon, which is why I'm dressed like I am today, by the way. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be recording that after we're done. Uh, that goes out on Facebook, on YouTube, on our website, uh, and we are reaching people all, uh, all over our community. Uh, especially, but even beyond that. So it's, it's been a, I think that's been one of the big positives. Good. That's good. And yeah, we noticed the same thing. And even friends sometimes who might not, uh, might've been too nervous going into a church building are now able to, uh, you know, check, check a little bit out and, and, and they're, and they're hearing some of the gospel, right? That's, that's, uh, that's a real fruit of this. Ab right? Absolutely. You know, we're also seeing this with our, our youth group uh, has been continuing to meet during this time. Uh, but they're back virtual. Uh, but what's interesting is that even with the virtual, the friends who they had brought along with them, they're joining them virtually too. So they have stayed with the youth group. So in some ways, uh, you know, these uh, visitors get to know us better. Right, right. Uh, right. In this setting than they do in another. Uh, we're also seeing that within the congregation, intergenerationally, where we might have been divided by Bible class, um, you know, and not really ran into each other during the worship service. Uh, now people are seeing and getting to know each other. And that's been a real blessing for us as a congregation. Good. Now, on the, there are negatives that go with it. Um, 
and I, and I guess, you know, one of the negatives has meant that when we moved online, some people did not go with us. Uh, and uh, even though, you know, Zoom offers the opportunity to come on with, you know, uh, just the phone, no picture, you know, and, and we have some that take advantage of that. Others do take advantage of the website, but don't go on to the Bible study. Uh, those happen to be the people who generally didn't come to Bible study anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but then we've also had on the negative side, uh, our children have been most impacted by this, our, our younger children. Right. Uh, they are Zoom uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. fatigued and, uh, and, and, their, and their parents just aren't willing to put them down in front of that camera again. Right. Uh, and and so, uh, you know, even though they had begun to come back to in-person Bible class that we were having until we had to shut down again, uh, they're not coming back to the Zoom. So we, we tried it again and nobody would come. So we just were letting that go. Okay. Um, so you tried to do every service again on Zoom, like Bible class, worship? What we, what we do on Zoom is we, we have uh, our Bible class and then we segue that in with uh, some singing. Okay. Uh, with everybody muted, by the way, um, we, we, we learned what Babel must have sounded like after God confused the languages because boy, was that crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and people have really warmed up to that. They love to just be able to sit there and they, they, even though they can't hear each other, they feel like they're at least as close as they can get. They're worshiping together. Uh, and then we, uh, and we lead that into uh, a Lord's Supper devotional, which you know, one of our men or uh, elders or deacons or other men in the church will lead that each Sunday. Uh, and, and it's been a very, you know, through the heart of the pandemic, we didn't start out that way. We started off just doing Bible class and I encourage people to go online because in my pre-recorded sermon, I do a Lord's Supper devotional at the end of it. And, uh, and somebody said, well, hey, why don't you just go ahead and do the Lord's Supper with everybody together? You got them together anyway. Right. Uh, and, and so we did that. And so that has been a, a, a big plus, um, you know, doing it that way. So that's the way we do it. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our own, you know, our regular Bible class, although we take a lot more time on Wednesday night to do prayer requests. Uh, we turned it into a bit of a prayer meeting. So okay. it's, it, yeah. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess you might have answered this already, but what did you miss most um, during the shutdown? What do you miss the most during the shutdown with regard to church ministry? You know, one of the things I miss the most is being able to be with people in their difficult times. Uh, when I'm just so used to somebody's in the hospital, I'm there. Uh, and early on, one of our members who was 102 uh, got, uh, she didn't die of COVID, but she, she uh, died of complications from a skin graft surgery that mm -hmm. she had had for skin cancer. And uh, I couldn't go. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and I couldn't be there. Another one of our members had a very serious uh, heart uh, attack that ended up being a, almost a six month saga. And he ended up with a uh, artificial valve, you know, permanently in his heart. Uh, to, and he's doing great now, but I couldn't be with him at all. Right. You know, so that was very difficult, you know, and, and uh, you know, we've tried, I make phone calls, uh, you know, we, we do, uh, uh, maybe drive by visits, you know, kind of stand outside, say hello, but you know, that being able to be there personally involved, uh, I've missed that. I, I've missed the, the interaction, uh, just the energy that you get from being with one another. Right. Right. You know, I, I think you know what I mean. You know, it, it's, uh, we, we preachers don't like to admit it, but we, we have a little bit of the showboat in us and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I try to try to keep that tamed, but there's a, there's a plus to that too, because, you know, it energizes me to be in front of the church and worshiping with them and, and preaching. And, and, and I miss that. Right. I noticed that like one of, one of the things I had to get was hearing aids, uh, a couple of years ago. And wow. they, there's a, there's a function on them that it can be party mode. And one Sunday I sit at the front and one Sunday okay. I'm, turned on the party mode and the singing just sounded, I hadn't heard sing because I hadn't had good hearing for over 12 years. I hadn't heard singing like that. It just, it was amazing to hear that singing. Um, and uh, so that's one of the things, and I know you love music and you love the singing love and everything. So that's a challenge, yeah. isn't it? Well, and that's one of the other things that I have lost is, uh, you know, I sing in a um, community chorus as well. Mm -hmm. And that is gone. You know, so that has been one aspect of my personal spiritual life, you know, because I it is, I mean, yeah, I can sing here and, and uh, 
uh, by the way, on my online uh, pre-recorded sermons, uh, I had been doing those and one of our widows, uh, I was talking with her one day on the phone visiting and, and she said, you know, Roger, I'm enjoying the sermon, but you're a singer. Why don't you sing a couple of songs? You know, we can sing along at home. And, and so I started doing that, you know, and then and it's, uh, but you know, I do miss that. And I miss singing with the church. I mean, yeah. there's a difference, you know, on Zoom, yeah, I'm singing with the church, but I can't hear them. Right. Uh, and, and that, that is a special yeah. part of worship. Yeah, sometimes part of the favorite part of worship is being able to hear others, right? Uh, Amen. You know, and uh, that's important. Preachers, oftentimes, we don't get to hear others as often. Uh, but singing is one of the play ways we do. And so that's a... Uh, yes. Uh, so what was a way? Um, and I, 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 I've experienced this through the pandemic. But what was a way that God showed up um, that might, might have surprised you? Maybe it was through the... Um, virtual means of, of getting together or whatever it might be. But what is one of the ways that God showed up that might have surprised you during the shutdown um, that positively blessed you or the congregation? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess that the, the one of the ways that God showed up was... Um, Right at the beginning of the pandemic, we lost uh, my associate minister. Oh. Uh, he, uh, he announced to the elders in January that he was probably going to be taking a pulpit position. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't make that, uh, that wasn't you know, planned to happen until March. Of course, then the shutdown happened and he still had not left. And it was just, it was a, it, it left our youth in a bit of a turmoil. Um, uh, especially the teen group. Uh, and we had a young couple uh, that are, you know, not fresh out of Harding, but not long out of Harding and uh, uh, working up here in the area. And they just stepped in and seamlessly grabbed a hold of the teens. Uh, and uh, they're not doing as much as he did because they can't, they both work. Uh, but they kept uh, that weekly mid midweek uh, I guess it was it's on Tuesday nights uh, where the teens got together. They've kept that going, uh, and they've gotten involved with the kids' lives and uh, and are making a difference. So that was one of the ways that we really saw God step up uh, in a big way uh, as as this all hit. You know, other ways. I, I guess it was just the church being the church. Yeah. Um, you know, because we've had uh, no problem when there's a need in the congregation. We say, hey, we've got a need. Um, we either have what we need show up or we have the money to get the need show up. Right. Um, and, and we have had, you know, no issues uh, with that. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and we've been, we've been blessed that way. So, uh, you know, I guess that's, that's the other way that we've really seen God, you know, show up P and people have really stepped into visitation and I'll, I'll, right. I'll say right. this, you know, um, that we were not always the best visiting congregation. Uh, but one of our uh, newer deacons, uh, who we call our deacon of welcoming and wellness, uh, he is a medical doctor, so that's the wellness side of it. Um, but he really felt we needed to do something more on being on our greeting ministry. And, uh, and that greeting ministry, because we're shut down in person, has uh, taken on the responsibility to go out and be, you know, visiting with one another virtually. Yep. And a couple of our widows, uh, they're just going out, you know, <laughs> if people are willing to have a visit, they'll come out and stand on their porch and visit with them. So right. it's a, that's been a really exciting to see that happen. Yeah. That's one of the ways that I was surprised was, um, I don't know how to put this properly, but we can kind of use the assembly as a crutch. Yes. And, um, and the, the connectedness, the seeking connection, right. Was came alive. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, in, in some ways, we acted like the body of Christ that we hadn't acted before. Yes. Um, instead of waiting till su from Sunday to Sunday to meet, we, we made connections. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, the hey, next well, one, I, I, I wanted to put one more out there. Yeah, go this, ahead. Is, this was, this is, you know, I, 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 I want to say that God showed up, but I wasn't surprised. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. True, we, true. But, but I, but I'm also very grateful for this. Right. Uh, because um, at least here in the States, um, as you know, uh, we have some particular political issues going on right now, uh, still, and, uh, 
And at Walled Lake, even with the masking issues and things like that, although we have, I'll admit, we have a, a few families that have said, when we don't have to wear our mask, we'll be back. Um, but they haven't been nasty about it. Uh, and no one has, uh, you know, just gotten in our faces and yelled at us. It's been, it's been a very peaceful spirit. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wasn't surprised. That's Walled Lake. But um, it, it, I was grateful because I looked around and I saw what's going on in other places and I'm going, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, th that leads to the next question, and I'm glad I gave this. Um, I know it's been on your heart for a number of years. You're one of the um, leaders about uh, racial harmony uh, in Churches of Christ, but beyond Churches of Christ as well. We want to see racial harmony um, in society, and, and as as white people, we want to be careful how we say racial harmony. We don't mean that to be, we want you to act the way we want you to act. Um, we want to really seek out justice more than harmony. Um, and I think that's heavy on your heart. And so during the pandemic, um, as you're well aware, and our world is aware, uh, regular life went on and, and um, we saw like, um, you know, the Brianna, Brianna Taylor case, Taylor. Yes. Um, Aubrey case, but I mean, we actually saw the George Floyd, which, which yeah. is horrific. It just, yes. it was horrifying. Yes. And so that's still going on. And, um, for, from my standpoint, who's been very untouched by the difficulties that so many of our, um, Christian family and so much of our human family has had to face, um, I couldn't help but feel, um, speechless and i thought obeying james you know be quick to hear i thought that was a, a that was time for white christians to be quick to hear it didn't take very long for some people to put the focus on whether or not george floyd deserved it even and and that was that was disgusting yes it was disgusting and um so um how did you feel um, I know it's heavy on your heart. It's heavy on your heart about the Detroit area. And how did you feel the pandemic um, impacted us in our response? And um, how did you feel about listening to like brothers like Rigel Dawson and so on as they handled it? So go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, James Snow uh, and I uh, started the United in Christ uh, 16, 17 years ago now. Uh, and one of the things, I was not surprised by some of the things that came out of uh, particularly white churches um, and white Christians mouths during this. Uh, and that's because, you know, we have uh, struggled against that headwind for 16 years. Uh, there have been, you know, churches who will make a good, you know, statement about unity, but then they won't join in anything. Um, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's, it's always been difficult. We're seeing progress and we're, we're you know, hopeful. But uh, this pandemic definitely put a dent in our efforts that we do um, as a collective group. Uh, we had to cancel our um, summer uh, biannual summer gathering uh, mega worship. Uh, and uh, that was a disappointment. Uh, we have uh, honestly struggled to get any traction uh, since then. And uh, we're kind of, I think we've kind of come to the point where we're letting that lay fallow for a little bit. Um, but we're getting ready to pick it back up again. Uh, and James and I are in discussions on how the best way to go forward with that. Uh, but I know as a, just as a local church leader in a predominantly white church, suburban white church, uh, whose members are predominantly Republican. Uh, and uh, it has been, of, I'm going to use the term frustrating because uh, it's been difficult to have the conversation. Uh, and one of our church leaders, a, a deacon, is African American. Uh, and I am, we are blessed to have him because he has been able to say some things to step people back and think about what they're saying. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I've been very, you know, thankful and I have, have expressed that to him several times, you know, that I, I'm it's so grateful that he is here. Uh, because, you know, our, our members just have not uh, been exposed. They have not had that experience. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been difficult. Uh, I've, 
I, I have maintained my presence on Facebook, although it, it has been torture. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do it because um, I feel like I have a voice to put out there and I'm trying to talk with people. Uh, you know, you it, you asked me to have a little bit of a devotional at the end and I'll, 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 I'll kind of, in that, I'll try, I'll try to, you know, kind of reveal more of my approach has been through this. But, you know, just getting people to, to think and to talk and to put yourselves in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. Uh, it has been, it has been difficult. Um, but I have not, you know, I, I have not stood up in the pulpit and raged about it. Uh, I feel like that just shuts people down. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I have encouraged people. And, uh, and it's not like there's a bunch of raging racists here in Walt Lake. Uh, there's not. And, uh, you know, that particular uh, individual I talked about, that family, well respected here in the congregation. Uh, you know, and we reach out to others in our community. You know, they welcome them. They, you know, take care of them if there's a need, just as they would anybody else. Right. But when it comes to the politics and how that affects their spiritual outlook, um, like a lot of people, you know, we're unaware. Right. And, uh, and, and as a result, you know, and, and particularly in America, you know, might as well talk about the, you know, elephant in the middle of the room, <clears throat> joke implied. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we've, got a, we've got a big divide in the United States right now, politically. And uh, our, our current outgoing president, uh, even though he doesn't want to admit that, um, is, you know, continuing to stir this issue up. Uh, and it really makes it difficult in a church setting. Uh, and that's why another reason why one of the things I, I wasn't surprised about the peacefulness at Wall Lake, but I'm very grateful for it because we have some people who could, you know, if they did not put Christ first, could have caused some problems because they are very much on the Republican side of the political spectrum. But they, they understand what's first and, I, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as the racism is concerned in our society, uh, I've been burdened by it. I continue to preach. Um, I was very touched by Don McLaughlin's book, Love yeah. First. Yeah. Uh, that, and uh, so much so that back in 2018, I spent the whole year preaching through the, not only, you know, those, the, some parts of that book, but other scriptures that really, you know, lead with that. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that, was, uh, that was seed well sown because I've been able to reflect back on that. And, uh, and, and I think it's kept us in, in a more peaceful setting. Uh, but that, I believe that's you know, where we go. You said it, listening. You know, just be willing to listen right. uh, and understand. And that makes all the difference in the world. I right. well, appreciate you, appreciate that. Um, we're gonna make sure we, you have time for your devotional. So I just wanted to uh, ask uh, this question. What's something that you feel uh, that you guys or your ministry itself gained during the pandemic that you don't want to lose when we go back to some sense of normalcy? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I thought about that and I thought, you know, the quick one I could have said, well, Zoom, you know, going online, you know, but, you know, uh, but I, I really thought about it more and uh, Zoom has been a great tool um, but what has really been the, the thing that I hope we don't lose is that sense of direct challenge mm. that this virus brought upon us. Right. Um, you know, as you said earlier, it's so easy to kind of get into that, you know, habit, thoughtless habit of, you know, church is all about gathering, um, doing what we do together and then going off. Uh, this challenge has made us open up and say, how do we do this better? Uh, we've had things taken away from us. Right. And then we've had to figure out how do we do that without that? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that's been good. Um, you know, as you may be aware, you know, the Metro Detroit area for almost 40 years now, maybe over 40 years, has had the Bible Bowl program for children. Uh, that got canceled. Uh, and honestly, it may not come back. We don't know. Um, and so all of a sudden we have to, you know, say, well, that was a big Part of our children's program. What do we do? Uh, so, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that we don't uh, just fall back into old habits, but that this uh, this sense of challenge and mission that this virus has brought upon us will be something we can uh, hold on to and be able to move forward with. Because uh, we should always have some that more of that uh, urgent sense 
you know, the gospel, you know, is urgent. We've got to be, you know, about it. Uh, and we lose that urgency when we allow ourselves to be lulled into the, the habit of weekly gatherings and, you know, and, and right, doing right. a minimum in it. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that that came and I hope we don't lose that. Good, good. Um, so was there anything on a personal level where you um, grew during this pandemic, where you saw something grow in you? Uh, I, I definitely. Um, it, it, Glenda and I were just talking about this yesterday. And, uh, you know, in our everything, I think everybody in their minds is probably in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 years younger than they really are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm not saying this in a, in a sense that I'm feeling really old now, but I, I've had time to, I've had time to reflect, um, to think and realize that, you know, I, I'm, I'm older. Uh, I do have things to offer that um, I have, a, I think I have more confidence in myself now. Uh, and it's been because I've had to face things and I've had to grow as a result. I've grown in my ability to present online. Um, but I've also grown in my, because I've sat down and done a lot more devotional work just to try to support the church right? Uh, and put that online or put that in on bulletin articles and things like that. So I, I feel like that has been that for me personally, uh, you know, on a, on my ministry level where I have really grown, but even on that personal, personal level, uh, having the time to just slow down right. Uh, right. and think, and I have, uh, I have reconnected with some, some people in my life who have been very influential spiritually um, because I stopped and I thought, you know, wait a minute, I haven't told that person how much they meant to me. I haven't uh, even talked to that person right. in a long time. And, you know, and, and, uh, and as a result of that, I, I know I have you're definitely uh, been blessed by them. And I, I hope I've been a blessing to them. But I, 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 that, I think that there is, you know, just I've had time to think. I've had time to accept who I am uh, and understand going forward that God can use me, is going to use me in greater ways. Um, so there you Good. go. That, that's Thank my you, answer. brother. Um, so I asked you if you could, if you had a passage that was meaningful for, to you or your congregation, and if you could bless us with a... Um, Five minute devotional, but don't don't worry, we got a, about seven minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can edit it out anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> isn't that what they always say? So anyway, uh, you know the passage that um, has been really meaningful for me, uh, and it's always been meaningful to me. Uh, I I love to sing, and uh, one of my early practices was to put scripture to a tune. And so, uh, you know, one of the passages that's always meant a lot to me and that I, I was one of the first ones I put to a tune back probably, uh, I know where I was when I did it. I was in Germany, but it had been probably 1985, uh, 84, 85, um, as I was a mission intern in Heidelberg. Uh, and it is Colossians, the third chapter, verse 12. And it goes like this. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, gentleness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving one another as the Lord's forgiven you, so you also must forgive, forgive. And uh, I, that's how I memorize scripture. And, uh, but when you look at the rest of that passage, uh, I think, you know, it really hits you, especially verse 14 and following. Above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you were called in, one, in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You know, this whole emphasis that Paul puts here on being patient, being kind, 
uh, forbearing, um, you know, I'm, that's out of the revised standard version, uh, <laughs> you know, forbearing uh, one another, you know, putting up with one another. Uh, you know, I, I, that, that's how I, my, my quick translation of forbearance is put up with. Um, these are all skills that we as members of the body of Christ need. Uh, and when we allow these things to, you know, be shown, it shows that, verse 15, the peace of Christ is in us. Um, you know, these are evidences that God's, that Christ's peace is truly at residence in our lives. Uh, and so, for me, this passage has been one that I have been able to bring up time and time again, not only to myself, uh, to, as a reminder to, to be patient, to be loving, uh, to be forgiving, um, you know, because, uh, you know, this has been a difficult time. And uh, I know I have in my moments of uh, frustration lost, you know, that discipline and said some things I probably shouldn't have. Uh, and to be able to receive forgiveness and then give that forgiveness to others who also are dealing with the same things. Uh, you know, I think this has been for me my, my, my center passage throughout this pandemic. Uh, and it's helped me understand within the body of Christ in particular, um, how I need to be messaging to the church uh, and, and uh, letting them, you know, remember, reminding them to be patient with one another but then, of course, always, you know, I never let people off the hook. I said that, you know, just because he writes this to the church doesn't mean that we have, we can't practice it outside the church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really, we must practice it outside the church. Uh, and we need to practice it. And especially that last verse. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus. Uh, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, if you can't do your politics in a Christ-like way, uh, there's a problem. Right. Uh, if you can't uh, express your frustration over the mask situation in a Christ-like way, there's a problem. Uh, and, uh, and so just, I just keep, you know, reminding myself to go back to here, uh, think about these things. And, uh, and I think that has been, you know, for me, what has been the most helpful. And I hope for, for your folks too. I know you have your own issues in Canada. Um, right. And, uh, you know, and, and we are in the same, you know, geographical region, obviously. Uh, and, and as, uh, beforehand you shared, you know, when Windsor has been more impacted than many parts of Canada because of its vicinity to, uh, Detroit and, uh, and all of the, the uh, people that work back and forth and, you know, the trade and it's, uh, uh, there's frustration there, but I think this passage will remind us that we need to just let Christ dwell richly in us. And when we do that, it's, it'll continue to help us deal with this pandemic. Thanks, Roger. Uh, one of the great things I think of often is that some, we're not Canadian Christians and American Christians. We're Christians who happen to live in different countries. So we're, we're citizens of heaven, right? And that's an important reminder constantly. I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things that I, I will say that has given me a lot of strength and it's a blessing that I count. Uh, my dad was a career Naval officer. Uh, so I have lived uh, all over the United States from coast to coast to island. Um, I was, we were stationed in Hawaii for five years. Uh, since that time, I was uh, blessed to live in Germany for two years. I've traveled to Kenya, to Pan to, uh, Panama. Uh, I've, you know, I've lived under other systems of government. Right. Uh, and for me, the kingdom of heaven is truly much greater than whatever my local political uh, system is. You know, and and I, that is a blessing. Yeah. It's been helpful for me. So I thank you for agreeing to be on today. Thank you for blessing us. I want to leave you uh, with the Apostle Paul's final words. Uh, I love this verse that he closed in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and verse 14. I just love the way he ended this book when he said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And uh, so God bless you, Roger. Thank you for blessing us today. And um, blessings on the, the remainder of your ministry and uh, get us through this pandemic, right? Amen. Amen. You, you know, God be with you till we meet again. And if it's not on this side of the veil, it will be on the next one. And that's going to be a happy reunion. Uh, it will be, but I'm sure praying that we get to meet before then. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> okay. God bless Roger.
God bless you too. Thank you very much.